In this video, I'm going to look at marginal and average propensity to consume. The marginal propensity to consume gives the change in consumption spending out of an additional dollar of disposable income. It will range between 0 and 1. If we take our standard consumption function, consumption equals a plus b times y, where c is consumption spending, y is disposable income, a represents autonomous spending, the level of consumption when income is zero. B, the slope of this function, will represent the marginal propensity to consume. And in terms of just slope form, we can think of it as the change in C over the change in Y, rise over run, and that'll equal B. In calculus, if you take the derivative of the consumption function, you'll get back the marginal propensity to consume, B. And so here is a consumption function. The marginal propensity to consume is just this coefficient in front of the y variable, 0 0.75. And that means an additional dollar of disposable income increases consumption by 75 cents. The marginal propensity to save is just 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. So in this example, the marginal propensity to save is 0 0.25. So an additional dollar of disposable income means that saving will increase by 25 cents. And you'll notice that the marginal propensity to save plus the marginal propensity to consume must sum the 1. 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25 sums to 1. Another example, a rise in disposable income from 20,000 to 24,000 causes consumption spending to rise from 18 to 21,000. What is the marginal propensity to consume? So we're just going to use our formula here, the change in C over the change in Y. So the change in consumption here goes from 18 to 21,000, a $3,000 increase. The change in income in the denominator is a $4,000 increase in income. So solving this, we get a marginal propensity to consume of 0 0.75. We could solve for the consumption function in this example. Again, our standard format for the consumption function, c equals a plus b times y. We know that b is 0 0.75. Let's solve for the a, autonomous expenditure. And to do that, we can do the following. For C, we can plug in 18,000. And when C is 18,000, disposable income is 20,000. So plugging that, those uh, values into our consumption function, and then I'm going to just solve for A. Subtracting 15,000 from both sides, A equals 3,000. So that is our consumption function. Instead of plugging 18,000 and 20,000 into this function, I could have plugged in 21,000 and 24,000, and I would have got the same results. All right, let's move on. The average propensity to consume is the ratio of consumption spending to disposable income. The average consumption spending per dollar of income is another way to think of it. C equals A plus B times Y is our consumption function. The average propensity to consume is just C divided by Y. It's not the change in C divided by the change in Y. It's just C divided by Y. Another way we could simplify or this expression is we could plug in for C, which is A plus B times Y, and simplify that. Average propensity to consume will also equal A divided by Y plus the marginal propensity to consume. One thing to note here, as y increases, the average propensity to consume decreases. So as y gets bigger, this whole thing over here gets smaller, so the average propensity to consume decreases. And in our final example, we have a consumption function, and I have this table. I'm going to evaluate this consumption function uh, at various levels of income, 0, 500, 1,000, 2,000. And then I'm going to see what the corresponding level of consumption is, and then calculate the marginal propensity to consume at that income level and the average propensity to consume. So if we plug zero into this consumption function, we see that C is 200, and 
the MPC and APC will be undefined. When we plug 500 into this consumption function, we're going to get 200 plus 0.8 times 500, uh, which is 400, so 200 plus 400 is 600. The marginal propensity to consume, the change in consumption, 600 minus 200, divided by the change in income, gives us a value of 0.8, 400 divided by 500. And the average propensity to consume here, 600 divided by 500 is 1.2. They're eating into their savings in order to spend more than their income. And when income is 1,000, consumption will exactly equal 1,000. The marginal propensity to consume, the change in consumption, we go from 600 to 1,000, and that is a 400 unit change in consumption. And our income goes from 500 to 1,000, a 500 unit increase. So 400 divided by 500 gives us again 0 0.8. And here the average propensity to consume is 1. And when income is 2,000, consumption is now 1,800. We get a marginal propensity to consume of 0 0.8 and an average propensity to consume of 0 0.9. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.